Hello, and welcome to the online orientation for English 2322 British Literature in the fall of 2013. I'm so glad that you will be making this literary journey with me and your fellow students this semester. This orientation will give you all the guidelines you will need to begin the course. I suggest that you listen to it in parts so that you can absorb the information rather than watching it all the way through nonstop. I also suggest that you keep a pencil or pen and paper ready so that you can jot down any questions that come to mind while you are watching. So let's get started. First, a little background information about me, your instructor. My name is Joyce Kurt Harpley and I have been teaching more than 20 years at Mountain View College, including developmental writing, English 1301 and English 1302, world literature, American literature, English literature, and humanities courses. I have four degrees, and they're all in English. I received a BA in English from Rutgers University in New Jersey. Actually, I attended what used to be the women's division of Rutgers, which is called Douglas College. I received a Master of Arts in Humanities with a concentration in comparative literature from the University of Texas at Dallas. Then I received a master's degree in English from the University of Dallas. And finally, a PhD, a doctorate in literature from the University of Dallas. Your primary class website, which is on the internet, can be reached at litliberallearning.com. Unfortunately, the website is currently being tested at a new server. We had a few problems with it crashing, and so it's being moved and being tested so that it does not crash during your semester. For this reason, I have a backup, and your course materials will be posted temporarily on eCampus or emailed directly to you. Uh, hopefully this will not last very long. I hope that by next week, at the end of next week, the website will be available. But I'll keep you posted and let you know when it's fully available to you. And I apologize for this inconvenience. But until we're sure the site is completely secure and not liable to crash, we don't want you to access it. We don't want you to be frustrated. Right now, please use eCampus and the information on the site the information on this site has not been yet been updated for the fall. eCampus, as most of you know, is available through the internet. You just um, want to Google. You can access it at our Mountain View College website, or you can access it by Googling eCampus at dccd.edu. Now, if you already have a current login and password, you can go ahead and try it, get in, access the course. There's not very much up yet, but there will be very soon. If you've not used eCampus in a while, you'll be prompted to change your password. Instructions for assistance, if you should need it, are at the tech support number, which is on the, the website homepage. eCampus access is required and it's free to every student who is enrolled for a, a course at Mountain View. We'll communicate via your eCampus email, so it's important that that email be current. Make sure to use an email that you check often. I'll be sending out uh, reminders and announcements via eCampus throughout the semester. If you stop getting emails from me, you, you will know there's something wrong and you'll need to give me a call or you'll need to just check your email to make sure it's the current one. I will email everyone a syllabus on the first day of class, August 26th. You will need to complete, sign, and return the student agreement form using the directions in, on it. Please get it to me before the certification day. For the spring semester, it's September 9th. It may be a different uh, date if you're um, in another semester, but you can check on your syllabus to see that date. You're not going to be enrolled in this course officially, or not have, I will not consider that you've attended until you do two things. Email me that you have seen this orientation and return the student agreement form. Certification affects your financial aid, so be sure to complete both of these requirements so that you can have no problem with your financial aid. 
Now this course has three required items. The first is the Norton Anthology of English Literature, Volume 1, Edition 8, by Stephen uh, Greenblatt. The second is Software, My Literature Lab Software, and you'll buy an access code from Pearson. And the third is Pride and Prejudice, a novel which you can get anywhere, including online. This is what the required textbook or anthology looks like. And you can get this at the bookstore. This is what My Literature Lab will look like when you access it online at www.myliteraturelab.com. It's, it's $33, or at least that's what it was in the spring of 2013. Hopefully it has not gone up. These are the instructions for getting on to My Literature Lab. Um, you're going to need to enroll in the course with the course ID, which is on this form, TARPLEY 08601. And all the instructions for registering in that course are also on this form. I am going to email the form to you as a PDF, so you'll be able to uh, get and print it and use it when you get online to purchase the access code for my literature lab. Depending on the semester, your course ID will change. The other third text is the novel Pride and Prejudice, which you can buy from the bookstore, check out from the library, but you can also download the entire novel on your phone, on your iPad, on your Kindle, or on your computer. InGrade is an online grade book that I use and uh, you everyone will be registered on this grade book. Uh, you'll be able to keep up with your grades in the course. I'm going to send you an access code on the first day of class but you're going to need your student ID to register. It's free so you don't have to pay for it. This is what it will look like when you access uh, to try to sign up that you'll put your access code in that blank space and uh, follow the directions on the sign up page. These are the directions. You Google InGrade, choose student and parent sign up, cut and paste the access code, choose next, and then you're going to be prompted to register by following, by creating an account following these instructions. So um, you need to just know that uh, the grades that I post on InGrade, the individual grades are correct, but the average may not be correct because InGrade doesn't always calculate your grades accurately after all it is free. So if you want to know your actual grade, you need to contact me and I will send out mid-semester reports of your grade around grade average around week 8 or 9. Another important website is your Kia class website and uh, you will access it at a screen that looks like this. You'll go to www.kia.com and this is what the screen will look like. I will give you an access code and a password, a username and password, so that you can log in to our website where you will take your objective test. Objective test will be on Kia. Um, you will uh, take quizzes, but they're optional. You do not have to take quizzes. After you log in, you will see the link below, and you just click on the link to get to your class webpage. So you have to click on this link, http, www, kia, etc. And then you're going to see a page that looks like this. Uh, later on, there will be quizzes on it, and there will be a test on it. So the quizzes will look like this and you'll be prompted about how um, many attempts you have and uh, if I put a deadline, how much time you have. Okay, let's talk about the basic course requirements for the class. The basic course requirements are to, um, well, the first thing you want to do is look at the calendar. That calendar will guide you through the course. So you, if you're going to the course website, www.litliberallearning.com, that will be on the course schedule button. If the site happens not to be available on the first day of class, then you can go to eCampus and find the schedule on the eCampus website. 
Uh, you're going to need to keep track of this schedule and because it's very important to help you keep up with the course. The pacing of the course schedule is recommended, but it's not required. In other words, you don't have to follow exactly to the letter each day what is on the schedule. You can go faster than the schedule or you can go slower than the schedule. The deadlines, however, are not optional. You do have to meet the deadlines. If you don't meet the deadlines, what happens is you're going to get behind in the course. And as soon as that happens, then it becomes more likely that you might drop, which is exactly what I do not want to happen. Now, if you get behind because of extenuating circumstances, you can request an extension. But you need to request that extension before the deadline. And you will not be able to get full credit for it like the people who turn theirs in by the deadline, but you will get credit. Another basic uh, ungraded requirement is to read and complete activities, usually text readings, at the Norton Topics online. Now, that is going to be accessible from the website, www.litlearning.com but it will also be accessible from eCampus. And you'll see the things that you need to read They will be on your course schedule. Another basic course requirement is to complete PowerPoint lectures. Now these lectures are designed to give you information about the course text that you're reading. Um, you also will occasionally have to view Longman Lectures on My Literature Lab. Again, this is ungraded, but very important. It is a requirement. You're going to need to do it in order to understand the course materials. You will have a study guide. A uh, study guide will be posted. study guide for each text will be posted on your course website under study guides. Um, it will all The early study guides will also be posted on eCampus, but I'm not going to need to post them all because once your, your website is ready, you'll be able to go directly there and get the information. Each study guide contains directions to help you get started. It suggests optional activities. It gives you vocabulary terms that may appear on the test. And most important, the study guides have questions. They include study questions. Now, as you answer these study questions, it will help you to see if you understood what you read. But the study questions will not be graded. They are for your eyes only, and they're to help you study as you go along and prepare for tests. You're going to focus your attention on key aspects of the text. That's what study guide questions do. This is an example of a study guide for Beowulf. It tells you the pages, the PowerPoint. It gives you step-by-step -step directions about what to do both online and in your reading. And then it gives you vocabulary words to study and to look up. And also, some of these vocabulary words may be answered on the PowerPoint. So sometimes you'll get all of them answered there and you can just jot them down after you print it. And the study questions are designed to focus your attention on what you need to remember. Now, there are three graded requirements for the course to pass the course. The first is discussion board, which is 20% of your grade, and it is required. The second is journals. Those are 30% of your grade, and they are required to pass the course. And the final is test. You'll have three tests. You can drop the first or the second, but not the third test. The third test is required. It can't be dropped. So these are, this is the basic information about the test, but I will be emailing you very specific information, a test prep, before each test. So let's talk about discussion board. Why do you need to have discussion board? Because we don't have any contact with each other. There's no contact between instructor and students and students and students unless we have discussion board. So this is a best practice for online courses. If you've never used Discussion Board, you're going to need to watch the eCampus tutorial. Now, the tutorial can be accessed on the home page where it says eCampus Student Tutorials. Or if you have any problems, you can call technical assistance, but I recommend that you watch it first. 
you once you click on eCampus Tutorials, you'll see a link that says Discussion Board Viewing and Replying Post. You're going to need to click on that link and it will bring up a discussion board tutorial that you are going to need to watch. Uh, you'll see this image and the discussion board is five minutes. The tutorial is five minutes. If you still don't understand it after watching, then you're going to need to call the technical assistance number and tell them that you watched it and tell them what you don't understand and they'll help you. All of the topics for discussion board will be posted on the calendar, although sometimes the, uh, the deadline or time for posting may change. Um, also, you'll get the guidelines for the topics. Um, that will be posted on your eCampus, excuse me, on your website as well as on eCampus. But the topics will be mailed to you and it will have the deadlines to participate. It's very important to participate on time because discussion boards are time sensitive and really they cannot be made up. So you want to make sure that that's something you get to. And I'll send out reminders via eCampus. Okay, your journals are very important. Uh, they are 30% of your grade. Only the test is more than that. So you need to make sure that you understand the journal guidelines and uh, that you keep up with the journals. Now, the journal guidelines are posted on the website litliberallearning.com lit and also on eCampus. You need to know that you can get an extension for journals, but you're going to receive only partial credit. Now, journals are not going to be emailed to me. They will be uploaded to InGrade. To earn a passing grade on a journal, it needs to meet the criteria. You have to follow directions, answer all the questions, and very, very important, it needs to be carefully edited. Quotations need to use MLA formatting. And if required, it won't be required on most journals, you will use a method called the SEEI method. It's a critical thinking method that I will explain and I'll send you an explanation and an example of that journal. I'm also going to send you an example of a passing journal so you can see what it looks like. Everybody will do a diagnostic journal. Um, this will allow you to understand the requirements, but if your grade isn't passing, it won't count against you. It'll just give you a chance to try it out and uh, see what the guidelines are like. Now, I will return your diagnostic journal with detailed feedback. And this is to help you understand what you need to work on, what you need to improve, what you're doing well with the journals So, and without getting a grade. There will be a grade, but the grade won't count unless, of course, it's a good grade and you need to use it later on to replace a low grade. Uh, you will not be able to see the feedback, though, on a phone. You'll need to view it on a computer that has a standard version of Microsoft Word. I'm going to use comment bubbles, and you simply will not be able to see those comment bubbles if you don't have the standard Word, Microsoft Office Word software. So it's very important that you do. And anything that you turn in to me has to be on the standard version of Microsoft Word. It cannot be on something else. Okay, so journals that don't meet, the, don't meet the criteria are not going to receive credit. So you want to complete journals carefully. They need to use MLA format. They need to be carefully edited for grammar, punctuation, spelling, and usage. And if you have some problems, I would suggest that you go by the learning center, the, excuse me, the writing center, uh, the ink spot, and let them take a look at your journal to let you know if maybe you need to do a little bit more editing. They won't edit it for you, but they'll let you know if it needs some editing. So that's something that is available to all Mountain View students, and you can uh, use that. I will post each journal grade on InGrade, and I will also email it to you. Again, there'll be some comments on your subsequent journals, but not in the detail that I put on your diagnostic. The journals are required to pass the class. They're 30% of your grade, and you need an average of 70 to pass. Um, you're required to do eight journals. Um, ten will be on, you'll be assigned ten, but only eight are required. I would suggest you do all ten, so if you get a low grade, you can drop it. 
Now you can get one point extra credit added to your final grade. One point may not seem like a lot, but if you have a 79, it's going to make the difference between a C and a B, and for all the other nines as well, 69, 89, etc. Now here's how you get that extra credit. You're going to need to phone call to discuss how the course is going three times during the semester, and I'll send an email when I'm ready for you to start calling and you'll have a, a deadline by which you want to call if you want to get the extra credit. The same is true with emailing. You're going to email me an update of how the course is going four times during the semester and I'll prompt you with an email. The main thing is that you respond within that time period and you tell me this is one of your extra credit emails. Now your other emails, um, just your regular emails, are not going to count for extra credit. Please note that when you're taking a test, for example, on Kia, you want to make sure that your internet connection is secure because if it's interrupted and you lose access to a test, you may not, it may not post your answers. It may not put all the answers and the grade may be lower than the one you actually should have earned. You need to complete all your tests within the prescribed deadline. It's very important that you do that because Generally, makeups or extensions for tests are not given. Now we've come to the end of this um, orientation, and I hope that you understand what the expectations are, but you can certainly go back through it, and I, if you have questions, I hope you will call me or email me with those questions. Now. You're going to need to send me an email that says English 2322 orientation completed. You don't need to put anything in the email unless you have questions and you want me to respond to them. It can just be in the subject line English 2322 orientation completed and nothing else. But if you have a question, put it in there and I will certainly reply as soon as possible. You can also call me at 214-860-8793. Leave a message if I'm out teaching and I will certainly respond as quickly as I possibly can. Don't forget to turn in your course agreement because that's the other part of certification. My office hours are uh, listed on your syllabus. You're welcome to come by at any time. I have open and closed office hours. Open hours mean you have do not have to make an appointment. Closed hours mean that you do have to make an appointment, but please come by for help if you need it. So now you're ready to begin the course. As soon as you've mailed in your verification that you've completed the orientation, you can start. The first thing you want to do is look at that course schedule, whether it's on uh, the litlearning.com or if it's on eCampus. You need to look at that schedule and I recommend just looking at the first week and getting started with what's on the first week. Let the second week take care of itself when it comes. Uh, you want to stay in contact with me? That's very important. You can email me with questions at any time at jtarpley at dcccd.edu. I'll monitor my email for your questions so that I may respond quickly. And remember, there's no such thing as a stupid question. Asking questions actually shows you are engaged with this course, but you want to ask questions early. Don't wait, and as often as you have them. Request extensions if you need them before the deadline. Remember to check your email and check eCampus. That's where I'm going to post reminders of deadlines on eCampus and send them via email, but you won't know unless you check your course email regularly and unless you monitor eCampus regularly at least three times a week. Stay engaged with me, your instructor, and with the course in order to do well. Don't put it on the back burner just because we aren't having actual face-to-face -face meetings. My goal in this class and in all my classes is 100% success rate. Please let me help you to achieve that.